Hello my soccer universe. I didn't necessarily plan on making a Premier League review video, but A. Many remarkable things happened already this weekend and during the week that fully make it uh, almost mandatory to talk about uh, the Premier League. Uh, B. The fixtures this evening, I'm quite recording Sunday evening, are uh, not all that enticing to me. And see, all the Premier League the games are, go are done already. So there's no, it was easy to prepare that. And so I would say we have to dig in. It is really hard to pick out uh, stories. I mean, the main focus, of course, is the title race, uh, where we thought it is all over when City went to Arsenal and won. Although there were good signs for Arsenal in there as well, since City had the least possession ever under Pep Guardiola. Uh, and then it swung all the way back. There's also, of course, the rise of uh, Man Manchester United as a potential title contender. We still have to see all about that. Uh, we also have uh, Liverpool is actually on the way back. Last time I made a video, I said, are uh, they done? Yeah, and since then they have won, had got two crucial wins. So uh, that is also a story. We have a really exciting, really exciting relegation battle. I guess if you're a neutral, if you're involved in those, it's definitely not exciting because it's just uh, crazy. But you know, now Leeds is squarely looking at a battle in there. Everton may have gotten a turn turn around and then even Southampton and Bournemouth and all everyone on the bottom is winning and suddenly we find West Ham United implicated there as well but to me overall if you ask me the biggest story after the title race but again I don't want to put City and City and Arsenal back up there but you know in a way it is um, it is the Chelsea I mean, so many millions. And we all said it doesn't make any sense the amount they're spending and then they're losing to last place Southampton. Millions don't score goals. It's as simple as that. And this, it, and this was really one of those where you thought, man, 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 man. And against West Ham and at Dortmund during the midweek, it actually did look at times all right, but it seems like that all the things that we said about Potter as a Brighton manager, they play uh, nice, but they don't score goals. That's exactly what happened there as well. So let's walk what happened over the past two weeks. And I believe we will start actually with the FA Cup replays that uh, you can see up here. Uh, of course, the biggest story for most people was the Sheffield United beat Wrexham, although Wrexham missed the penalty uh, there. Um, but also, I think Fulham uh, ousting South Sunderland was a big one. We have the FA Cup opens up uh, quite remarkably. Uh, we don't have as many great ties in there. It's Manchester United against West Ham. It seems like the big name fixture in there. Uh, Fulham against Leeds United potentially uh, is also a good one but you can see there is a lot of you know you could see Spurs making a run uh, especially if City or uh, United trip up but on the other side it could be all in all Manchester final as well or maybe we have a good chance of getting a second tier team into the final too so uh, I think it's a very interesting FA Cup. Uh, also during the same midweek we had a highly entertaining 2-2 draw between United and uh, Leeds United. Um, right after Jesse Marsh got sacked they were coached by committee and as far as I know they're still coached by committee because of uh, none of the coaches that uh, they wanted have yet agreed to one. Uh, in both cases Leeds United struck early. Uh, Nyonto and the one I think was also a kind of in play by Nyonto, but it was Varan Ong on, on goal. And it really seemed that Leeds United get a pretty huge win. And then who else? Rashford scores and Sancho gets another one. And of course, we had uh, Sabitzer getting his first start. And that's, of course, the Austrian perspective for Manchester United. In an overall, probably a disappointing 2 2 for, for them, I think, ahead, ahead of the game. Both teams would have had opposite reactions but you know uh, it is what it is then West Ham United against Chelsea I think for about 20 30 30 minutes it seems like a Chelsea is gonna eat West Ham alive they outplayed them uh, especially Joao Felice was brilliant Enzo Fernandez uh, doing the threats and 
they also uh, are very Im uh, were the two that combined for the goal. Crucially, though, is Lucas Paqueta, the one player who could uh, provide some spark for Weber, Weber, but also not very much a David Moyes player, got injured, had to be subbed off, and suddenly Thomas Suchek came on, and he had quite the game. Uh, you will not see him on an official team sheet much, but hey, I think with him... Uh, West Ham could control the midfield a little bit better, and then they got the equalizer through Emerson after Jer Bowden uh, assisted him. And then in the second half, it was of course Suchek uh, first making a goalie save that no one saw, and then scoring a goal himself where there was a build up in the offside. It was not a good weekend for VAR, this was just the beginning. Uh, of course, it was all uh, about Arsenal Brentford there. Uh, where the equalizer through Ivan Tony, uh, two of sides in the build-up, and it should not have been. Uh, absolute disaster class by VAR in that one, and of course, everyone going, but well, how can you not see two of sides? And I have had to say, when I saw that goal, it literally looked like a little bit that it looks fishy. And then you see the replay, of course, there, there, there is an offside, no? Was no, it was no offside game. It's one of those things where you really wonder what were they looking at. And of course, Arsenal are really reeling from that one because, you know, uh, they had the big game ahead. They now lost more points after losing already against Everton. And this time, they actually really lost some ground there. So that was uh, a major talking point. Uh, on the past weekend. Uh, another one, I think there was a Brighton uh, in the Crystal Palace. Brighton, there was also a VAR controversy as far as I, re I, I remember. But uh, another remark was that Leicester just steamrolled uh, Spurs and Spurs, of course, had uh, players um, injured, especially Bentancur out, which, of course, also they had implications for the match against Milan. And so the 1-0 lead by Bentecourt was quickly cancelled out. It was 3-1 already at the half through Monday, Madison, Iannaccio, and then uh, they got a fourth one late on. And uh, Leicester slowly getting out of the funk, although it was not all that long to be, as we'll see what happened on this weekend. Um, other results, we had, of course, another Leeds United, Manchester United, and this time uh, it was a tight game. Uh, United had to fight really hard, but in the end they got the win. A uh, little bit against the run of play, but again, Reg Rashford and Garnacho and Rashford would, would, would have gotten even the third one. Uh, as did Wejos, but both of those were called for offside, so VAR can also work. But overall, yes, um, showed the what United actually can do, that they look rather solid uh, at this very moment. Um, then City took care of Aston Villa and that was a big one in the title race because now previous uh, time Arsenal lost, they lost, now they actually made up two points that meant with a win they could draw level at Arsenal during the midweek and therefore control their own destiny because even if Arsenal had a game game and there's only three points you win the second game you're right up there and you have the better goal difference and it was not that hard for them uh, Rodi Gündo and Mares settling it already in the first half and then the Merseyside Derby that was kind of uh, built as a major duel because uh, Everton came off the huge win over Arsenal Liverpool really reeling in all kinds of ways and it was kind of, is this the one where, where Everton really get it going? No, that game was not a great one, but Liverpool pounced on their chances. Uh, this was also the beginning of me getting uh, really sick. So um, I actually, I remember watching it and then kind of falling asleep, which tells you a lot about the game, but I saw both goals. The first goal came on a counter-attack where uh, Everton hit the post and then within a few seconds, um, Nunez had sent Salah, set up Salah, and it's 1-0, uh, and then right half, after they have Conor Cody cannot really uh, defend, and the Kakpo can pull it in, and that settled the game. It was not pretty, but it was efficient. It's all what Liverpool needed. Going on into the midweek, yes, 
we had the big one the an absolute humongous game between arsenal and manchester city um and it lived up to the billing and i said it already in the build-up this was a game and i made a dedicated one minute video on it because i just just was that hum uh just momentous and it actually uh really uh took my attention away from the champions league which is something that's almost impossible to do but these are the two best teams in England at the moment. And as I said, the game lived up to, up, up, up to it. Arsenal controlled City's, City in possession. City having a little bit, uh, you know, just, 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 just about a third of the possession, which never has happened to a Guardiola team. That shows you how well Arsenal actually played. However, individual errors were there undoing. One uh, by, uh, no, nah, what's the... Japanese uh, guy, guy's name. Uh, it, 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 it was a bad back pass um, that De Bruyne actually saw it before that already. I mean, the game was kind of uh, stalemate in a way. Uh, and then De Bruyne gets in there, gets his foot foot in its 1 0 city. However, Arsenal come back, and this was right at the moment where Arsenal actually tried to take control. Uh, open miss by Nketiah, which is the other thing that Arsenal couldn't convert the chance to have it, and they get a penalty. Yeah, Edison, um, the way he key comes out, there's just, if he makes contact, it only can be a penalty. I understand why he was frustrated, but there was unfortunately not uh, anything else. Tommy Yasser was the player who made the bad back pass. Uh, it was also that Bernardo Silva was put into a weird position, uh, kind of on the wings, uh, <laughs> defensively, which is not his position at all. And of course, uh, Guardiola then, Brings on Akanji, uh, changes up the system. The second half started very feisty um, with City almost getting a penalty, but there was a foul in the build-up, so it didn't count there. Uh, and then slowly, 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 City is taking the life out of Arsenal. The really nice, nice text is Grealish. Finishing it off, it's 2-1 City. Arsenal then really try pressing, have a chance to equalize again cannot get it done and when Holland makes it 3-1 I could easily switch over to the Champions League because I knew there's no coming back for Arsenal there was no coming back and at that moment City were in firm control as not, not only of the destiny but also in my model firmly control of the title race and you really thought this is not a hard one for Arsenal to uh, swallow and come back into it they definitely would need a win at Villa and I made a one minute video about that one as well because that was the second best uh, game on the weekend. Uh, I would argue that quality quality wise, the midweek clash was even better, but from the drama, this was just outstanding. Um, Arsenal did control the game. However, it was Oli Watkins and Coutinho that gave uh, Villa twice the lead with Saka, only e equalizing in between. Um, and then it was all Arsenal in the second half with out really uh, creating that many chances then Sinjenko gets uh, the equalizer after an Odegaard assist a really nice shot um, and of course they press forward Odegaard missing a big one but on the other side uh, there will ha also be a big save had to be, be made it was put at the crossbar so it could have gone really wild for uh, um, for our, our Arsenal and then it will count as an own goal uh, for Emi Martinez but it was Jorginho who takes an amazing shot deep in stoppage time. It bounces off the crossbar head of Emi Martinez into the net. And then a little bit late, later it on, an empty net goal through Martinelli settles it for Arsenal. Huge comeback win because Arsenal had lost games in a, or, or had only made one out of nine points and then had the League Cup loss to Manchester City as well. So they were trending definitely downward in, the, in a sense that was a huge comp coming win to lift their spirits again because they needed this win and I thought this could be a really big one boy I did not really know how big this would turn out to be because as we'll see in a bit Manchester City drop points or maybe let's talk about that game uh, that City completely outplayed Nottingham Forest and again uh, they even took the lead um, I think through uh, Rodri uh, no Bernardo Silva brilliant shot uh, there um, 
But they cannot make a second one, especially Holland had a huge chance to make this one and with their only shot on goal, Chris Wood, after Gibbs White assist, makes it 1-1. Total freak result and even Guardiola admitted as much that they actually played really, really, really well. And therefore that win for Arsenal completely swung it back a little bit in their way because now they control their own destiny, although uh, Raid Rings by CD are still the favorites. A huge result also at Stamford Bridge with uh, James Ward Prowse converting a free kick in stoppage time. Chelsea losing at home to last place Southampton after playing actually really well in Dortmund, not scoring. They are not scoring as again. It is just crazy what Chelsea, Chelsea is doing. I think Graham Potter is under serious trouble already. Uh, although I think you need to give him a pre preseason. And you know, honestly, Chelsea should use this as a ride, ride off and say, okay, let's focus on getting the team somehow together. And he has to find some players in this huge squad that he has built that actually will do some, so something. But not winning again against Southampton. Yes, missing chance at blah, blah, blah. But it just doesn't look good. And it's a real, real shame there. Uh, very big results also in the relegation battle. We had Everton beating Leeds with a free goal by Coleman from a very acute angle, pull, 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 pulling it in. Uh, that was a remarkable win. We had Bournemouth winning at Wolves. Big win there as well. And then, of course, we had Forrest peeping um, um, in one point against Manchester City, meaning the losers are definitely Leeds and, of course, all, uh, West Ham. We had yesterday evening also Liverpool getting two early goals from Nunes in Gakpo. Then Nick Pope is sent off for handling the ball far out, trying to take away from Salah. Now he is um, he is uh, banned from the League Cup final. And Dubravka, the reserve goalie, is also cup tight, which is really, really weird. And so uh, there will probably be uh, Loris Karius playing, which, yeah, is that a good omen? Uh, with a man more, Liverpool actually had more trouble than uh, playing at home easily. And Newcastle probably should have scored at least one. The, bell, uh, the expected goals battle ended quite even. So I found this a uh, rather interesting overall result. Uh, United beating Leicester 3-0. Who is scoring? Rashford twice. That guy is just on fire. And then West Ham is really now in the relegation zone after losing 2-0 to Spurs and deservedly so. Uh, the first one really nicely played count, counter-attack that Emerson Royal finishes. And then Son comes on and is assisted by Harry Kane to get a second. So glad to see him back on the scoring sheet as well. With all these crazy uh, <laughs> results, let's look at the current standings. And it's Arsenal back up top, but you see only 33% chance of making it. There's a little chance for United to get in there, but United, of course, are now uh, looking at a very safe top three finish. Newcastle and Liverpool uh, and Spurs are basically the three contenders because no one really believes that Fulham or Brighton could go into this fourth spot. Chelsea are out of it, which I actually thought about uh, even a few days ago that Chelsea actually could mount something. No. If you look at the bottom, uh, West Ham still not chances-wise uh, great, but uh, it is a really a dogfight. And this is a really interesting relegation battle. Um, also, I want to point, point out it's probably better in now because there's, it's an uneven table to look at the adjusted standings. Maybe see at the moment that Newcastle are top four and Liverpool are in the top seven. And of course, we give it a few more games to make up. Expected standings. City just barely ahead of Arsenal, but that's you know can change at any time. And on the bottom, it's still Everton, Bournemouth, and Southampton, but uh, Nottingham Forest, Leeds, and Wolves, West Ham hanging all in there. So I think it's very exciting up the top and very exciting on the bottom. Of course, on the bottom, you don't want to be part of that, but as a neutral, it surely is exciting. Fixtures on the next weekend, we have the League Cup final, and because of that, the um, fixtures for Newcastle and Manchester United have been postponed. Other than that, we have Spurs against Chelsea, that's a pretty uh, big one there. Uh, but other than that, you know, Leicester are, are Arsenal is a potential trip up game. Uh, then we have some midweek fig fixtures from the round where we had National Morning, we have Arsenal, Everton, we have Liverpool against Wolves already. So that uh, are two very interesting games that we just had a few week, weeks ago, the reverse fixture. So 
<laughs> return fixtures I've played before the initial ones and then on uh, the following weekend City started, started against Newcastle that could be an interesting one Newcastle having only lost twice this season both against Liverpool we have of course Liverpool against Manchester United Arsenal against Bournemouth could provide another swing potentially Chelsea Leeds Wolves Spurs you know interesting stuff and a big one on the bottom between Nottingham and Everton so that's it from me from the Premier League uh, all that I can summarize for the past two weeks please add anything if you are so inclined give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will surely talk to you soon bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye